All right, in example four, we're gonna approximate the area under y equals x plus one from zero to four using both methods where delta x is equal to one. So this is the change in x values or the width. So think of delta x as the width. of each rectangle. Okay, so both methods, that means the first method is inscribed rectangles. So inscribed rectangles will look like this. They are basically underneath the line. And the left end point is touching the line right here. So the height of this rectangle is equal to one. So H1 is equal to one. And then another rectangle, the left end point will start here. Height two is equal to two because it's too high. Okay, so we had a height of one, a height of two there. And now the third rectangle H3 equals three, it has a height of three. And fourth, has a height of four. So H equals one, H equals two, three and four. And the width, like I said, delta x is equal to one on each rectangle. So delta x is from zero to one on the first rectangle. And then you have another width here, another width here, and another width here. Now you find the sum of the areas. So the sum of the areas equals the width times the height. So on the first rectangle, it's one times one. On the second rectangle, it's one times two. And then on rectangle number three, one times three. And then on the fourth, one times four. So once you add up all those sums, then it's equal to 10. So the approximate area under the line y equals x plus one using inscribed rectangles is 10. Now for method number two, we're gonna use circumscribed rectangles. So a circumscribed rectangles, the right end point is on the line and, it, and the rectangle is overlapping the line. It's going past the line. So here you would have a width, the width is still one on either rectangle and the height two on this first rectangle. So H1 would equal two instead of one on this other rectangle over here. 
and then H2 would be this one. H2 equals 3. And then height number 3 equals 4. And then height number 4 equals 5. So now you find the sum of the areas. So width times height again. So one times two for the first rectangle. And then delta x, one times three. One times four. One times five. And that equals fourteen as the sum of the area. So the approximate area using circumscribed rectangles is fourteen. And inscribed rectangles was ten. The actual area would be somewhere in between those two numbers. Okay, let's look at another example. Example five. Approximate the area under the curve of f of x equals four minus x squared on zero to two by dividing the interval zero to two into subintervals of equal length delta x equals zero point five and using inscribed rectangles and part B circumscribed rectangles. Okay, so in part A we'll use inscribed rectangles. So the left endpoint is touching the curve. Actually, um, in this case, the curve is going down. So it would be actually the right endpoint that touches the curve. So if a curve is going down, it's the right endpoint for inscribed rectangles. Because they have to be inside the curve, not outside the curve. Okay, so we get uh, three rectangles here. We can't draw a fourth because the right endpoint would be here, touching the curve, and you would have no height. So there's no rectangle there. Area of inscribed rectangles. So you multiply the width 0 0.5 of each rectangle and multiply by f of 0 0.5 for the first rectangle because that would be the height. f of 0 0.5 is just plugging in 0 0.5 in for x squared and then solving. And then f of 1 would be the next height. So whatever this comes out to be right here. And then the next height would be f of 1.5. And that would be this height right here. So 
So those are the three heights multiplied by the width. Since we have the width outside, you don't have to do it each time. You can just uh, multiply the sum of all the heights by the width. So f of 0 0.5 is 3.75, f of 1 is 3, and f of 1.5 is 1.75. So you add up all the heights and then multiply by the width. 4.25 is the, the area the approximate area using inscribed rectangles. Okay, now we used circumscribed rectangles. The width is still 0 0.5. The curve is going down, so with circumscribed rectangles, the left endpoint will be touching the curve, and the right part will be going over the curve. Yeah, again, because the curve is going down. Whereas in example four, the curve was going up, or the line was going up. Okay, so left endpoint again. And then this one right here. And then another left endpoint right here. And you can see with circumscribed rectangles, we get four rectangles since the curve is going down. It's going to be an overestimate because you have this extra area, whereas the this one was an underestimate because you had um, area left over. So f of 0 is the first height, so this is 0 right here. The second height is f of 0 0.5, this one here, this left endpoint. The third height is f of 1, this endpoint here. And the fourth is f of 1.5. So the width times all the heights, plugging all these heights, uh, all these all these x values into the function to get the height. So four is the first height, f of zero, f of zero point five is three point seven five, f of one is three, and f of one point five is one point seven five. So the, the estimated area with circumcised rectangles is 6.25. And this is an overestimate because the, the rectangles are covering more than the curve, whereas this one was an underestimate. because they weren't covering the whole curve.